Okay, so what we're going to do in this video is investigate these three sequences, okay? And we're going to see what happens when we've got this starting value of 2 in each case. So, for this first one, we've got u1 equals 2, so our first term is 2. So I'm just going to write them down like a sequence of numbers rather than u1, u2, u3, etc. Okay, so typing in 2, press equals. Then 2 times the answer key, take away 3, and it will generate the sequence for me. So we've got 2, 1, minus 1, minus 5, minus 13, minus 29, etc. So what we can see with this sequence is that it's going more and more negative. Okay? Um, what we were, would refer to as diverging. So that one is not of particular interest any further than that. It's just getting going to get larger and more negative. So let's go with number two. Let's see what happens then. So we've still got the starting value of two. So two press equals, then answer key divided by two, take away three. So our next term is minus two. Then we've got minus four. Then we've got minus 5, then we've got minus 11 halves, so minus 5.5. Then we've got minus 23 quarters, or minus 5.75. Then we've got minus 47 eighths, so minus 5.875. Let's do one more. Minus 95 sixteenths, so minus 5.9375, etc. Now this one, yes, these numbers are getting... Uh, more negative, okay, larger negative, but the gaps between them are decreasing and they seem to be homing in on a value, okay, whereas the first one did not. Let's have a look at the third one before we uh, investigate a little bit further. So we're starting off with two again. So we've got two equals, then opening up the fraction answer plus 6 uh, and answer in the denominator as well so the next term is 4 then 5 halves so 2.5 then 17 fifths so 3.4 then we've got uh, 47 seventeenths so 2.76 etc then we've got 149 40 sevenths so 3.170 etc. So then we've got 2.89, then we've got 3.07, then let's do a couple more, 2.95, then 3.03. .03. Okay, now what's happening here? Now with this sequence, these are getting well, larger initially, then it goes, then it decreases, then it gets larger again, decreases, larger, decreases. So it seems to be kind of um, uh, swapping between two values, but the gaps between them are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, as if they're kind of self-contained. So, you know, if you were to draw this, if you were to see kind of like what was actually happening, then, and this was your uh, position, so what first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, etc. Um, and let's go uh, one, two, three, four. Then our first position is two, then it's four, okay? Then it's 2.5, so that's there. Then we've got 3.4, which is about there. Then we've got 2.76, which is about there. And then what you're getting are these values are kind of homing in on a certain value as you get further and further along. So, both number two and number three appear to be converging on a particular value. And this value, whatever it is, we refer to as the limit 
of the sequence. And clearly, uh, for number one, there was no limit, okay? Because it was just getting larger and larger and larger and more negative, okay? So, um, so number two and number three have this limit. Can we actually find out what it is? We've got an idea, this looks like it's homing in perhaps on something like minus six. This one appears to be homing in on something like three, okay? Is there a way of figuring out what they are? Now, yes, there is. Okay, so, this is how uh, the method works. So I'm gonna show it for number two first, and then I'm gonna show you um, how it's going to um, work with number three and also back to number one again, right? So, number two, the idea is that as you go further along this sequence, the number, as you can see, right, the number you're putting in is getting closer and closer and closer to the number you're getting out. And the further you go along this sequence, these two numbers, un and un plus one, get closer and closer and closer and closer together. So let's imagine that they are the same value. They've, they've got so close together, they are the same. And we're going to call that L. Okay, L for limit. So both the previous term and the next term have got so close together that they are the same. And what it does is it gives us an equation to solve. Because then I can multiply everything through by 2, subtract L from both sides, and I've got L is minus 6. And as we could see, these values were homing in on minus 6. And so that was the limit of this sequence. What you also find as a consequence of this is if you had actually started, if I get my blue pen, no, green pen, there we go. If you'd actually started with minus 6, okay, so minus 6 was the first term, then you would have minus 6 divided by 2, uh, take away 3, which is minus 6. And so what this does is it generates a constant sequence. So if you start a sequence with its limit, so with its first term is the limit of the sequence, it generates a constant sequence. And that's a very useful thing to know. Now, that method worked for number three, okay? Uh, sorry, for number two. Will it work for number three? So what we're going to do is we're going to replace the un and the un plus one with l. So we've got l equals l plus six over l. So if I multiply both sides by the l, I get l squared equals l plus six. So l squared minus l minus six is zero. Here's a quadratic equation, so I could factorise that to get L, um, uh, let's have minus 3, sorry, L plus 2. And that's giving us L equals 3 and L equals minus 2. L equals 3 matches the situation that we had here. Okay? And perhaps... If I'd started from another value, maybe I could have homed in on minus 2. Okay, so um, what would make sense? Well, let's say we started with um, minus 3. Okay, so minus 3 equals. Then open the fraction button, answer plus 6, divided by answer. That gives us minus 1. Then we've got minus 5, then minus a fifth, so minus 0 0.2, then minus 29, then we've got 0 0.793, then we've got 8.565, this seems to be doing some weird things, doesn't it? Okay, then we've got 1.70, then we've got 4.52, 
then 2.32, then 3.58, and I'm just going to keep on pressing equals, and slowly but surely, you keep seeing what now it's homing in on 3. So I've pressed it a load of times, and I've got 2.99997397. So very close to 3 indeed. But it does have this initial wobbling around, okay? So what appears to be happening is it's not home, wanting to home in that minus 2, but it will home in on the 3. So what you've got here is what you could call um, a repeller really, it's repelling these values away. And we're homing in on that one rather than that one. Now the underlying reason behind this has got to do actually with where this curve, y equals x, so x plus 6 over x, is intersecting the line y equals x. And it's to do with the gradient of the uh, intersections, the in gradient of this curve as to where it intersects this one. Now if that gradient is between minus 1 and 1, then it will home in. And I'm assuming that when L is 3, when X is 3, the gradient of this curve is between minus 1 and 1. But for minus 2, it's outside that range. And that's why it's not homing in. But if you start with either of those two values, so starting with 3, for example, 3 plus 6 is 9, divided by 3, you get 3. You'll get a constant sequence. L is minus 2, minus 2 plus 6 is 4, divided by minus 2 is minus 2. So you get minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. Even though minus 2 is not attracting, um, uh, and wherever you start it won't converge on that point, if you start at minus 2, you will still get a constant sequence. Okay? Now, these methods of finding the limit of the sequence um, is a very useful tactic if you need to find the limit of the sequence. But I've left that number 1 till last, okay? Because let's see what happens. Now, Although you can replace the un plus 1 with l, and the un with l, like that, then I could add 3 to both sides, subtract l from both sides, and I get 3. But, actually, what's happening here is that even though I've got a limit from the algebra, clearly, I'm not homing in on it. Okay? So, what you've actually got is because... You know, for exactly the same reason as the gradient of this line compared with that one. Okay, so if I try and draw these, there's y equals x, and y equals 2x minus 3. Looks like that. Okay. Then if I have this starting value of 2, I'm just thinking where they're going to intersect that would be at 3, wouldn't it? Um, so if I have this starting value of 2, I go up to the line, um, sorry, wrong way, go to the line, 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 okay, and it diverges away. So if you start at 3, that's perfectly fine. Starting at 3, your next value is 2 lots of 3, take away 3, which is 3, and 3, so it generates the constant sequence if you start with that limiting number, okay? But you're getting all these different behaviours, some of which they home in on, some of which they don't, and there are some underlying mechanics looking at the graphs of y equals x and y equals g of x behind the scenes um, that are causing this behaviour to happen, okay? And clearly there is more investigation here that is worth doing to really understand why this is all happening.